Part 3 of My Report on the McCarrick Report by Patrick Parson Because the McCarrick Report is 449 pages, or 461 total, if you include the title page, blank pages, opening statement, and table of contents, although I usually avoid reading the end of a book first, I am going to go immediately to the conclusion on page 449, so studying the report will not be weighed down with wondering what the report's final assessment may be. It is short enough to read here in its entirety. So this is the conclusion. The foregoing account has detailed the Holy See's knowledge and decision-making regarding McCarrick from his first Episcopal appointment through 2017. The report concludes the Secretariat of State's factual examination ordered by Pope Francis in late 2018. As the Holy Father has stated, If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26 these words of St. Paul forcefully echo in my heart as I acknowledge once more the suffering endured by many minors due to sexual abuse, the abuse of power, and the abuse of conscience perpetuated by a significant number of clerics and consecrated persons. Crimes that inflict deep wounds of pain and powerlessness, primarily among the victims, but also in their family members and in the larger community of believers and non-believers alike. Looking back to the past, no effort to beg pardon and to seek repair the harm done will ever be sufficient. Looking ahead to the future, no effort must be spared to create a culture able to prevent such situations from happening but also to prevent the possibility of their being covered up and perpetuated. The pain of the victims and their families is also our pain, and so it is urgent that we once more reaffirm our commitment to ensure the protection of minors and of vulnerable adults. Unquote. That quotation from Pope Francis, by the way, is not his commentary of the completed report. It is from the letter of the Holy Father Francis to the people of God, dated August 20, 2018, written before he had made a decision to have the investigation concluded. So that's it. That's the full conclusion after two years of investigation. We acknowledge suffering by many minors and recommend preventing such situations from happening again. Who were McCarrick's cronies and allies who abetted or participated with him in his sordid criminal actions? Are we going to stop with McCarrick? and ignore all the other parties who committed these criminal acts? What about all the individuals whose lives were destroyed through the power wielded by McCarrick and his ilk? What about all the vocations forever lost when evil men manipulated them into unspeakable acts? What of the culture of depravity that still exists in the hierarchy? Why is the word homosexuality not even mentioned? What does Pope Francis have to say about what is in the report? How are the recommendations, vague as they are, going to be implemented? Or is this all there is to everything? The Church has done its job in looking into things, and now the report can be safely filed away and forgotten.
The conclusion in my mind is not satisfying. In fact, it does not meet my definition of a conclusion. I was expecting it to summarize what McCarrick had done, how he got away with what he did, how to root out the other McCarricks from church hierarchy, and what specific steps will be taken to prevent further abuse. Or am I expecting too much from a conclusion? If the conclusion is an indication of the report itself, I wonder what the point of the report was. Just to let people know we're working on it? Will the body of the report do any better? Let's hope so. In the meantime, let's pray the Fatima prayer as Our Lady, Holy Mother of our Savior, taught us just over a hundred years ago. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy.